this Sunday at the O2, which you can watch over in the UK on Sky Sports, but here in America you can watch on Peacock, which is a great addition to our our library of uh, platforms that are showing fights these days. Um, they had a nice debut on Peacock recently. They come back with another great card. And like I said uh, at the top of the show, just a few weeks ago, we had Ben Whitaker on the program. He is one of the big names um, on their roster that is competing on this card on Sunday. For more on that and a whole lot more, we talk to the CEO of Boxer right now, Mr. Ben Shalom. There he is. Hello, Ben. Finally. How are you? I'm very well. Finally, Finally. get on the show. It, feel, it feels like... I think this feels like when people get on Jimmy Fallon. This is it. Um, this is it. Wow. This is, a, this is a big moment. This is a big moment, but no, good to be with you. Well, that is a great compliment. I appreciate it. And uh, congrats on all the success, and especially the success as of late. Uh, it's been a great start to the year for you and the promotion. And, and selfishly, I love the Peacock deal. Uh, because now I don't have to find uh, you know other ways to watch your cards. I can I could watch it uh, very nicely and safely from my home. Can I ask about that first and foremost? Um, obviously, we know about your 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 foothold in the UK, and you have a lot of UK based fighters. Why did you make this deal with Peacock? And could you tell me like what kind of a deal is it? In the sense, is it just a Peacock deal, or is it a Peacock and potentially an NBC deal down the line as well? Yeah, it's it's been a crazy journey. I remember only a few years ago, you know, writing handwritten letters just to try and get on UK TV. Wow. You know, we're a young business for people that don't know us, especially in the US. This has been a, a crazy journey. I turned 30 last month. A lot of my fighters are, are older than us. And, and we went from Five Spike that you might know, it was Biocom home. Then we went to ITV4 and BT Sport, only putting on tournaments. We we ran these eight-man tournaments and, and built the business slowly but surely and then landed the Sky Sports deal a couple of years ago, which has really put us on the international scene. And I think the one tra challenge we had is we've had to grow our fighters from scratch. And now they're getting to the stage where they're going to be competing at world level. You know, a lot of our fighters are now going into their world title fights and now getting to the point where they're headlining shows and you're starting to hear about them and you're starting to see our shows. And, and we needed an outlet. We needed, we needed an outlet for them in the US, which is such a big market. And so we've been speaking to NBC for a while. They obviously came out of boxing a few years ago but for various reasons. And so the key was just trying to convince them why we were different, why they should take our shows, why this could be a great entry for Peacock, who have WWE in the Premier League on Peacock as well, why they should get involved in boxing. So it's early days. At the moment, the shows are on Peacock. We do have a couple of slots on NBC each year, and the and the plan is to build. And they've got a they've got a long term plan. They wanna they wanna think long term, and it gives us the opportunity for for us to come and do some big shows in the US when we're ready. But things are flying at the moment in the UK, and we have to focus right now on the UK. Some of our some of our stars that we debuted with, you know, guys that guys that we started our business with, are now headlining shows and now getting to the to the top of that various weight division. Yeah, no, and and I completely agree. And, and one of the things that I love about the UK scene at the moment, like I'll, I'll listen to talk sport all the time and midday, they're talking about boxing. Uh, you cannot find that anywhere here in the United States. No one's talking about boxing or MMA midday on any type of like ESPN radio. So it just shows how popular the sport is right now. But your story fascinates me because you're 30 freaking years old and you're among these giants these these yeah. larger than life promoters who are much older than you, and uh, and I, and I know a lot of them probably don't want you around, and they make things difficult for you. And I know that you know as a young boy you were a fight fan, and correct me if I'm wrong, you used to go to uh, Bolton Wanderers games with your dad, and you would see Amir Khan there. And now you know several years later you're promoting Amir Khan, one of your your biggest shows. How do you go from the young kid who's just a fight fan? to an actual promoter at such a young age. I know that's a long journey, but like when do you yeah. say this is what I want to do with my life as opposed to just being a fan of this? Oh, you know, when I told when I made the decision at 23 years old I was going to commit to boxing, people thought I was crazy. You know, it's not a traditional career path. It's decades before it, especially in the UK. I know over in the US you've had Heyman and Top Rank running it for decades, but in the UK with Hearn and Warren it almost seemed impossible, but I think when you're a young man and you, you're chasing your dreams, almost that naivety is, is a good thing. And so we just battled through everything. I mean, even from getting my license in those early days to 
to finding our first office, to finding our first venue that would let us do a show. We've had to work harder than anyone else. We've had to think differently. There's been many that have come out, come into the sport with loads of money in the past and not been able to stick around. And we've just always taken a long-term view, a grassroots approach. And as you said, coming into any industry, especially an established industry, you're going to, you're going to be met with some huge resistance, but in boxing in particular, it's a brutal sport. I've said it even outside the ring, never mind inside the ring. And so I think it's just the resilience and believing in that we can do something different and we can, we can focus on the next generation of the sport and making the sport more accessible, more transparent, more relatable. And, and that's worked so far and managed to, to get, you know, huge broadcast deals. And, and now we believe the future, the stars of the future. And yeah, sometimes I have to look and I looked up, you know, to Frank Warren and Eddie Earn growing up. You mentioned Amir Khan and Anthony Crawler and Ricky Hatt, and these were Manchester fighters. I remember being in the top row of the Manchester arena and now being ringside. I mean, as you said, promoting Amir Khan against Kel Brook, which was a, a huge fight over here. It is pinch yourself, but with those promoters, it's now gone for, from people that, you know, you always wondered how they did it to people that, you know, you're competing with and people that, some of them, you know, don't want you around. And so it is a, it's a surreal experience when I, when I really think about it and look back and look at where we've got to. It's pretty incredible. We're doing some of the biggest shows in the UK now with some of the biggest broadcasters around the world. But I have to say, we're a young business. It's still very, very early stage. Um, and, and the best years are ahead. So it's definitely an exciting time. And especially to get this Peacock deal and the NBC deal now, it, it gives us a bit more of an international view of, of the world of boxing. Do you feel as though Frank and Eddie respect you? I think, I think deep down they'll see what I've done without the support, without the fathers, without the business backing, without the money, without the know-how. And they must think, how the fuck is, how how has he done it? How how is he how is he resisted all the pressure and how has he stayed in the game? And yeah, we get more than most. I think um, I think underneath it all, they'll they'll understand how hard it must have been to 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 get to this position. And uh, and yeah, I think respect is earned over time. So you know, it's it's like with anything, like with it with any business, with any sport, longevity is key. And uh, we're starting to get into it. You know, we've been around now four or five years and, and we're still here and we're still getting bigger and and, and we keep rolling with the punchy. Um, You know, they, they uh, and, and typically most promoters, there are some, uh, the Al Heymans of the world who don't do media. Um, but I would say with those two individuals, they're very charismatic. They love the limelight. They could do interviews for two, three hours and not miss a beat. I would say perhaps you're a little bit more reserved and and for whatever reason, don't want to be as front facing is that accurate and if so why is that why are you not a it, traditional promoter in that sense it is i think for me the job of a promoter is to make sure your fighters get the right opportunities but make sure they're fighting in as in as bigger audiences as possible whether that's on tv whether that's in the arena and so that's always been the focus for me i think as well you have to look at the practical elements i'm building a business from scratch there's more to my job than just coming on and doing an interview with you. You know, we, we, we've gone from absolutely nothing, a, a shop window, renting an estate agent, people knocking on the window, thinking that we're selling houses in the back streets of Manchester to putting on some of the biggest shows around the world and, and, and being able to deliver in the biggest arenas in, in the world. That takes a huge amount of work away from the cameras. And that means you have to prioritize the things that matter to you most. And, and that's the fighters. That's making sure they get the right opportunities. That's making sure that they're seen by as many people as possible. Sometimes I think, if I'm honest, the promoter importance is, is it can be overemphasized. Broadcasters run this sport. Our job is to make sure there's broadcaster interest in the sport. There's money coming into the sport and the fighters are getting the biggest opportunities. And, and that's what we focused on so far. So yeah, I think it's a, a combination of what's important and, and, and what the reality is of the business. And as I say, we've gone from two people to 25 people to big offices, and that, that just doesn't happen overnight. How would you describe um, the experience with Sky? Because, you know, my view of it is uh, Eddie and Matchroom are on Sky for many years. 
They take the DAZN deal. Now there's a hole in Sky Sports boxing programming. And perhaps they say, you know what? We're going to take a break. You come in, you, you, you strike a deal with them. And now as a result, you know, the little engine that could, the young upstart has a massive you know, spotlight on them when perhaps if the dominoes don't fall that way, you're maybe growing a little bit slower. Now all of a sudden you have to ramp things up because you're with the big dog sky. Uh, is that a blessing and a curse? Well, to be honest, when we started the business, we always saw boxing one as a global sport, but also one with our language barrier. But then when you look at the way the world was going, broadcasters are competing more than ever. You've got OTT platforms. You've seen Netflix and Amazon and the boxing is a big, big sport over here. And we were offered deals before Sky that we didn't take because we didn't think it was the right opportunity. It was the right platform for us to do what we wanted to do. And so we took a bet on the sport and we took a bet on what we believed in and our vision and the opportunities, broadcaster opportunities in particular would open up because the competition now is fierce, never mind in boxing, but in the broadcasting world. And uh, yeah, I think, of course, we're, we're extremely blessed and lucky and excited we, to have the Sky deal. And we had to do a lot of work to convince them to to stay in the sport and, and the, the, the benefits that boxing could still bring to them and, and all the rest of it. And, and that was the culmination of a lot of hard work. But for me personally, boxing is in a healthy space. And when you, yes, you see broadcasters from time to time drop out the sport, but you see more broadcasters coming in. And that was always the, the, the plan. And we, we feel that that will increase. And we feel that the sport's only getting bigger. And in the UK, as you mentioned, this is a huge sport. You know, we've got 13,000 people coming on Sunday night for a British title fight. This is, this is something special at the moment. When we've had Michaela Mayer and Clarissa Shields and, and the US fighters that we've, we've, we've worked with come over here and see the sort of spectacles that we can put on. It's another, it's another, it's another animal. And so I think, yes, sky is great that opened up, but the broadcasting world is changing. Opportunities are happening, and, and we feel we do something different. Yeah, uh, the fight on um, on Sunday, as you said, British heavyweight title fight, Fabio Ward League against Fraser Clark. The buildup has been really fun. Um, the promotion has been fun as well. I'm curious, why Sunday? Uh, last event was Sunday as well. Is there a particular reason for that? Just, we've got Man City Arsenal playing on Sky. 3 million audience, Easter Sunday as well, which means Bank Holiday Monday. We're going to get a huge audience for a, for a great fight. And it's almost the biggest heavyweight British title fight since Anthony Joshua against Dillian White. And wow. that was the platform for both of them going on to huge things and both becoming pay-per-view stars in their own right. So we just wanted the biggest possible audience with Ben Whitaker on the card as well and Vidal Riley, who people may know as KSI's trainer, but has taken the sport really seriously and and really goes into his grudge match as well on Sunday and just the biggest audience possible on an Easter Sunday where we can sell a huge amount of tickets. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a big, big event in the UK. Okay. Yeah. That obviously makes a, a ton of sense. Um, can I ask, what do you think when you, you see Eddie and Frank together in Saudi Arabia with uh, Mr. Turkey Al Sheikh, it seems like all of a sudden the two rivals are now the best of friends and, uh, yeah. and, and, and you're not involved in all of that. How do you feel about this? To be honest, as a boxing fan, and sometimes I have to take my, you yeah. know, myself out of it because I was a boxing fan at one stage and I never believed this would, could have happened. And so to see it happening, yes, of course, it's the money. Yes, of course, we, we understand it's the backing. But from a boxing perspective, the opportunities and the money that's being poured into the sport is, is great. We always said the promoters need to work together for the sport to really thrive and succeed not just here, but globally. And yeah, so from, from a boxing fan perspective, it's, it's an absolute blessing. And I think it should continue. Of course, we want to continue to work with promoters all around the world. We do on often occasion with Queensbury and Wasserman and Top Rank. We've worked with a lot and we'd like to with Matchroom in, in months and years to come. But if I'm honest, it's a good thing because especially in this country, when, when when Eddie was on Sky and when Frank was on BT, you had about a decade of, of nothing, nothing between them. And it stopped so many fights happening and it stopped the sport. You know, when you talk about how big the sport is in the UK and you think how big it could have been had they worked together. So, yeah, long may it continue, to be honest. I just hope to see more 
promoters involved as well. And, and, and yeah, I actually cannot complain about it. Uh, why do you say we'd like to with Matchroom with a smile? What's precluding that from happening? Look, I think ultimately I get it. We're like the young, annoying little shit, I guess, <laughs> that has broken into the industry and 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 is doing well and as the master great stable and probably has some of the future stars of the sport, particularly in this country. And at every hurdle, we keep coming through. It used to be we can't run we can't run many shows. We can't do a pay-per-view show. We can't sign an Olympian. We can't, we're not going to stand up regularly. We're not going to be able to get sponsors. We're not going to be able to get the venues. And every time we've, we've rose to the occasion and we keep growing. And so look, I'd love to, for them to, to take a different approach and, and not see it as they do. And I'd love to be able in the future to be able to work with them. They're probably the only promoter that um, we found difficult to work with so far, but I do get it. You know, it is a it's an industry that they have run and, and, and been involved with for decades. And and in any world and in any industry, you would expect the same. If I was going to start up a, you know, a, a, a computer business to rival Apple, I'm sure they'd be met with the same the same disdain at the start. And so I get that. And uh, it's just something that we have to come through. And you've got to have a tough skin in this game, a thick skin in this game. And. And and that's what this is, and 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 we'll continue to grow and focus on what we what we do. So on on Saturday night, I saw a, a load of interviews um, with Eddie Hearn speaking quite passionately about wanting to make the Dalton Smith versus Adam Azim fight. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I've got you. I've got you back. I've got it, you back. So I saw a bunch of interviews with Eddie talking about he wants to make this Adam Azim versus Dalton Smith fight, and he was quite passionate about it. I saw interviews with Frank Smith talking about text message conversations with you. It seems like they really want to make this fight. So what's stopping it from happening? Do you want to make this fight? Look, as a promoter, and this is where it comes down to, you want the biggest fights. It's the biggest money. It's the biggest gay. It's the biggest viewing figures. But ultimately... First of all, we had to wait till Don. I saw people saying, well, we should vacate before Don Smith even for, you know, the McGuigans and Adam's team have to wait for that fight before they can even assess what options are on the table. We presented all the options to, to the team. One of them is Dalton Smith. Adam Azim is a baby. He's a 21 year old. I'd want to catch him early. I'd want to fight him as early as possible. I believe Adam Azim beats Dalton Smith now, but I believe he wipes the floor with him in three fights. And so I get it, you know, and, and that's the game. And again, it's trying to push and, and, and push maybe the team and their team into, into making a decision. But ultimately, we're the promoter. We present the options to the management team. We work with heavily with the McGuigans. You might know Barry and Shane and Jake, who are, who are a big family over here. And they're not going to listen to a promoter, never mind not their own promoter, as to what fight they should take next. So I expect to hear back. In the next 24, 48 hours, as I say, one of the options is Dalton Smith. We'd love to see that fight. And we, it is a huge fight. But ultimately, um, they'll make the decision that's right for them. Would it be fair to say that you would be okay with that fight? If they say, yeah, we'll take that fight, are you okay with it? Because I felt like the way it was being presented was you were one of the roadblocks for making that happen. No, we all, and this is the thing, and I think it's trying, again, it goes back to this whole matchroom boxer thing. We as a promoter want the biggest fights possible. We, you know, cannot pull fighters out of first biz. It's always the management team, and the management team will right, make the right decision. Do I want the best for Adam Azim? Of course. Do I think the Fraser Clark decision was the best decision, and now he gets to fight at the O2 in front of thirteen thousand people, in potentially front in front of a million audience, and in a career high payday, it's proven to be the right decision. And uh, I think Adam and his team will make the right decision. But as I say, he's 21 years old. He's a baby. He's created a lot of noise in 10 fights, become one of the fastest ever European champions that's ever been, you know, graced the, the, in, in British boxing. And so if I was them, I'd want to fight him as early as possible. I really do. But yeah, the options are there and, and we'll see what the McGuigans decide, and, and, and uh, I'm sure they'll make the right call. I can't wait to see Ben Whitaker fight again. I love watching him fight. Uh, what a personality, what a star. Mm -hmm. 
How did you feel yeah. about how he was treated by the referee in his last fight with all the warnings and whatnot? And are you worried that that is going to change him as a fighter? Because I think part of the appeal, like I think he could be one of those guys that really helps in your expansion, especially here to the United States. It was fascinating to see how the American sports fans were like, this guy's the man and how the boxing uh, public was like, oh no, you can't do that. The, the, the juxtaposition was fascinating, but I think the American fans would really love him. How, are you worried that, you know, some of that heat from the boxing public in the UK and from that referee and perhaps other officials to come will kind of change him and stifle him as a, as a showman? With anyone else, I would say yes, but <laughs> I promise you he was warned. He was warned by this referee, and I think the referee was way over the top last time. Remember, I think it was the first time the U.S. audience was seeing him. So the background of it is the There was some sort of, we got to stop this type thing. The referee went to see him beforehand and it didn't stop him that time. It's how he fights. It's how he unsettles his opponent. He's an absolute showman. He's a superstar. As you mentioned, it, Peacock and NBC are going absolutely crazy for him. You know, he did 100 million views across platforms on, on his last fight. I've never seen anything like it. For me, he's the future, not just star of British boxing, but future star of boxing. If anyone wants to be entertained, if anyone wants to be introduced to the sport of boxing, but he's not just a showman. This guy is a phenomenal boxer. One of the most talented I've ever seen, if not the most talented fighter I've ever seen. He's been all around the world with, with the, his amateur career. He's, he's tough. He's been in with the Eastern Europeans. He's been in with the Russians. He's been in with the Cubans. So he ticks that box as well. I think for us as a promoter, it's just about, as I said at the start of the interview, giving him that window, making sure he's on the biggest platform because this one is going to fly. Ben Whitaker can be a star for, for a long time in boxing, potentially a, a face of boxing and the face of boxing. And to, to have had the impact he's had in six fights, amassed over a million followers, one of the most followed boxers now in British boxing and world boxing, in this amount of time is crazy and no one has seen anything yet because um we we luckily get to work with him and we know him and we know how focused he is and we know what goes into his craft and the team around him is phenomenal and uh you'll see on sunday i think we start at 1 p.m eastern time on peacock but for anyone in the us that wants to see a potential future superstar you've got to tune into ben whitaker and uh yeah i believe he'll be our he'll probably be our entry into the U S because, um, yeah, I know how, how keen NBC are. I can't imagine being a 30 year old promoter in the sport of boxing. Do you find often that fighters, managers, trainers try to take advantage of your youth, try to alpha you bully you, things of that nature. And, and maybe that was a thing seven years ago and less so now, but you feel like that's something that you could um, continuously have to battle as you're trying to assert yourself in this sport? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, 100%. The older managers, the older promoters, I'm a young guy. Some of my fighters are older than me. Yeah. Have a fight, you know, and but the ones that I'm closest to are usually the some fighters that I entered the sport with. Like, say, the Ben Whitakers and the Fraser Clarks and the Lauren Prices and the Caroline DeBars. We almost started our careers together. So there's a very, it works both ways. There's a very, very close relationship that develops because you're going, I've built my career with them. Um, and so it's a really interesting experience when you get into like the headline shows and you've invested, your whole journey has been with these fighters. So in that respect, it works really well because the fighters can relate to you and you you you, you, you sort of from the same generation, same sort of background, same sort of interest. But yeah, this is a brutal sport and I've had my, head in the washing machine plenty of times. I still do. You know, we have we have our heads spun all the time. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a sport that you have to be streetwise at the best of times. So coming in in your twenties, especially at this level, you're an easy target. I've got no mistake about that. But one thing that me and my team will we 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 just it doesn't bother us and, and it's just something that we move forward with. And as you say, happens less now still happens but happens less now but yeah some of the stories that i have from being a 24 year old 25 year old promoter running around manchester and 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 having to make a way are just 
they're crazy. And I, I don't think many people could probably wish, wish stand those moments. Um, so, uh, and I'm just curious, do you, like, who, who, who is the money behind Boxer? Who, who, I know you're the CEO, but who's the owner? Is there like a singular owner? How does that work? No, I own the business. Um, I took out a, I think it was a 10,000 pound loan when I first got my license. Um, and we have literally run day to day up until this point. Obviously, we have a great deal now. And I'm so grateful for the deals that we have and the partners and the sponsors. But no, I own the business and and that's something I'm very proud of. And, and it's something that, that we've always run we've had to run a tight ship, you know, up until this point, we've had to, I used to run the shows without any broadcaster revenue. We had to learn how to put on TV shows with just sponsorship and tickets and the principles of business that that teaches you has stood me in good stead. But yeah, we've had to, we've had to fight for every, everything that we have. And we, as I say, we are still a young business. We're still growing. Um, and yeah, it's very exciting. As, as a lot of the people that I started with, at my age, we started together, we're still going, we're still learning, and we have a we have a massive future ahead. And so, yeah, to have the stable that we've now amassed and the shows that we had without foreign investors, without still owning our own business and all the rest of it is uh, it's an incredible experience. Uh, what, what can you tell us, what could you say about the article in the Times back in January uh, alleging that there was a relationship between you and your promotion and the uh, the infamous cricket spot fixer Majar Mazid. Uh, this this has created a lot of headlines and some accusations thrown your way. What what can you tell us about this? Yeah, this was a it's it's, it's confusing to me a bit. This was a guy that was involved in the sport way before even I was, and and there's a lot of characters in boxing, and there's a lot of characters that represent all sorts of fighters in boxing and. Yeah, it's uh, we feel we know where it's coming from. We do feel there's a there's a bit of an agenda going on there, and it's something that will be dealt with. But ultimately, that's part and parcel, and it's skullduggery in this business. You know, we we the the better we do, we know. As I say, this is a, an isolated. We we know where it's coming from, but the better we do, the more challenges that we have to deal with. And uh, yeah, it will be dealt with. But it's uh it's uh it's a difficult one when 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 we're talking about people that have worked with every promoter, and when we're talking about such such a, it's hard to understand what the wrongdoing is that we're being accused of. And uh, yeah, as I say, I don't want to say too much about it because it is being dealt with. But um, yeah, it's uh, I think we know where that's coming from. Can I ask where do you think it's coming from? Well, look, I, I I don't want to stoke the fire. I think. It's anyone in British boxing, I think it's pretty obvious okay. um, to many people what's going on. And and when you say being dealt with, what do you mean by that? Look, uh, look uh, clearly information that has, we've had no wrongdoing with is being leaked fraudulently. You know, this is accounts. Again, no accusation of wrongdoing, but just a, anything to create a salacious story about our business and our business is based on transparency. Our business is based on cleaning up the sport. And so it's uh, it's definitely an attack on that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's something that, that all, all things come to come to the surface. And uh, as I say, there's no wrongdoing on our part. And, and, and so sometimes we're, we're sat here confused as to as to what the accusation is. But um Look, we'll continue to do what we do, and and nothing is going to stop us. You know, Mayor Jonas, Bawatsi Aziz, Wardley Clark. This is our best start to a year. We're putting on the, some of the biggest shows. It might in the UK. I don't know how much you'll see it, but we're putting on the biggest shows in the UK right now. The biggest cards in the UK. We I have see the future. It all. I see it all. I watch have, it all. You see it. I listen to Simon Good. Jordan. I hear all the craziness. I love all this shit. I I I, I eat it up. Um. And, and that's fair enough. And c could I ask, who do you think is the greatest promoter of all time? It could be boxing, but when you think of like, this is the guy, this is how I want to build my business. This is how I want to act. This is how I want to be treated by fighters. And have, who, do you, who do you consider to be the greatest, boxing or not boxing? Well, I have a hell of respect for, for every promoter because it's a hard job and you've got to work hard and you've got to be on your game every single day. 
we want to do things differently. So it's hard to say, I want to be like this person or want to be, we want to do our own thing. I have a lot of respect for all of them. I, I think Bob Arum to me, only just, just the longevity of it. Yeah. Just what he's, he's pretty incredible. You know, if you think back to Muhammad Ali and the nights that he'll have been involved in there and then still seeing him do it today, that's pretty special. But all of them, you know, Eddie is in a fantastic, I don't think we've seen a better showman as a promoter than Eddie Hearn. I think he's an unbelievable interviewer and, uh, and, a, and a great salesman on camera and Frank Warren as well. And I'll hate, I mean, to survive in this game, you've got to, you've got to, be talented and you've got to be pretty special and you've got to work hard and i've got a huge amount whatever they whatever might happen in business and things like that anyone that wants to be in this sport and and, and can last in this sport especially those i think with bob and frank warren in particular i relate to his journey you know he had to start against the cartel um, which they were called over in this country where they completely had a lock on the sport. And and I always I always took inspiration from that journey. We had to, well, I had to start, you know, with, with relatively nothing and, and no connections in the sport. And so I think those guys that, that went through that are the, are, the, are the biggest inspiration. Why should this audience watch on Sunday? Give us the uh, the pitch. Whether it's on Sky Sports, oh, just... I think 50% of our audience is, is uh, in Europe. So it's not just the Peacock audience. Um, but Peacock here in America, Sky Sports in in the uh, in the UK, and I believe Ireland as well. well. Why should they watch? It's a look. It's a special card. It really is. I think in the UK, everyone already already knows why they'll be watching. It's been labelled the biggest card of the year in in Britain. Ben Whitaker, the future star, will open the show. Vidal Riley, who's got two million subscribers on YouTube, is in his big test against Mikhail Lowell, who just comes out swinging and definitely will do after his performance against Isaac Chamberlain. Florian Marku, I don't know if you know him, Ariel, he's the Albanian king. He mm-hmm. sold 25,000 tickets for us over in Albania. He takes a huge test against Chris Congo. We open with Alan the Savage Babich against Steve Robinson, which is just a fun heavyweight fight between a monster and a small guy. And then we have the the big one, which is I think this British title fight. And I, I don't you you may know the history of it with the purse bid situations and 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 it absolutely blew up as to why it didn't happen the first time. Fraser Clark still has the chance to become the quickest ever heavyweight British champion against Fabio Wardley, who is a knockout artist of the highest order on Sunday night. And I don't think anyone can really call it. Um, it's a it's going to be a special event in front of a sold out O2 on an Easter Sunday. So um, anyone in the US that really wants to experience a quintessentially British boxing night, which is what this is with the atmosphere and the heavyweights involved, needs to watch on Sunday on Peacock. I love it. Uh, much respect. Congratulations on all your success. Uh, I also think you have a great, and, and, and I'm a fan of women's MMA and women's boxing as well, Caroline Dubois, the sister of uh, the great Daniel Dubois, as you mentioned, Lauren Price, uh, Natasha Jonas, uh, Francesca Hennessy, which is a great story, such a young uh, up-and-comer. You, you really have a nice roster of, uh, of female fighters as well, showcasing both. So uh, much respect to you and the team on everything you've done up until this point. Good luck on Sunday, Ben. Uh, well done getting those elbows out there, fighting off all the all the haters and detractors. <laughs> Keep doing your thing. And uh, great to have you on the show for the first time, the first of many appearances, I hope. Respect. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, there he is, Ben Shalom, the CEO of Boxer. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.